Hello everybody and welcome to our webinar. My name is Jessica Haplowitz and I will be your moderator for today's session. We are very thrilled to have you all join us today as we explore the Here Maps API for JavaScript and how it can help you unlock the power of location intelligence. During this webinar, we will be, we will be discovering the various capabilities of the Here Maps API and how you can leverage them to create powerful location-based applications. Throughout this webinar, we will cover a variety of topics. After a short introduction, we will familiarize you with the Here Maps API for JavaScript and dive into the features and capabilities of the API. You will discover how it can help you create powerful location-based applications and take advantage of advanced location data. We will also look at real-world examples of location services integration. This will give you a better idea of how the API can be used to enhance your existing applications or create new ones from scratch. In addition to these informative discussions, we will also have a live demo from our solution partner in Pargo. They will showcase how they have successfully integrated here services into the application to provide innovative solutions to their customers. Finally, we will wrap up with a Q&A session where you can ask our experts any questions you may have about the Here Maps API for JavaScript. I would like to thank my colleague Karina Ziegelmüller, as well as our distinguished guest, Nicole Hermann, Product Manager at Here Technologies, and Julian Labeit, CTO of our Here Solution Partner in Pargo, for their support and for sharing their valuable insights with us today. The webinar will be kicked off by Karina Ziegelmüller, Global Partner Manager at MPI. For those of you who don't know Karina yet, Karina was with Here Technologies for about 12 years before she came to MBI. There she was responsible for building up the partner ecosystem in Europe and APEC, focusing on solution partners through various industries. In addition, we are very happy to have Nicole Hermann, Senior Product Manager for Location Services SDK at Here Technologies. He is a graduated geographer and has been in different development and product management roles within HERE since 2007. Currently, he is responsible for Web SDK Maps API for JavaScript, HERE Style Editor and Location Services Map Rendering Data Formats as Head of Product Management. We are also very happy to have Julian Labeit, CTO of our HERE Solution Partner in Pargo, join us today. Julian is a German CTO and software engineer with a master's degree in computer science. He has experience in algorithm engineering, parallel algorithms and software development and has worked as a software engineer at Google and Palatina Software Systems. In his free time, Julian enjoys martial arts, competitive programming and kite surfing. We want to make sure you have the best experience possible in today's webinar, so we have a few housekeeping items to go over. To ensure a distraction-free presentation, we've muted all attendees. We will also be holding polls throughout the session and would love your participation. If you have any questions, simply use the questions pane to send them our way. We'll address them in our Q&A session at the end of the webinar. And don't worry, if we run out of time, we'll follow up with you via email. Lastly, we'll be sharing a copy of the slides and recording with you afterwards. So without further ado, let's dive into the exciting world of Here Maps API for JavaScript and explore the endless possibilities it has to offer. Karina, please go ahead with the introduction to today's webinar. Thank you, Jessica, already for the warm welcome. And I want to extend my welcome to each and every one of you who have joined us today. Before we proceed, I must take a moment to express my sincere appreciation to our esteemed partners in Pargo and here for their invaluable time and effort in presenting to us today. It is an absolute delight to be working with Nicole again, uh, with whom I have had the pleasure of collaborating for over a decade during my work at HERE. Additionally, it is an honor to have Julian, the CTO of Impargo, join us today to showcase their exceptional work based on HERE. I'm pleased to know that we have some familiar faces in uh, attendance now today, as well as several new ones. Um, therefore, I would like to take this opportunity to provide a brief introduction to our organization. Um, if we can move on. Yes, thank you, Jessica. 
So MBI was established back in uh, 2009, and actually we do have our anniversary now in May, uh, which is uh, very exciting. <laughs> so we're located in Karlsruhe, and um, since then we have expanded our portfolio by acquiring Microbauer Micromarketing in Düsseldorf and Konya's Risk Intelligence in Heidelberg, where we have also established our academy offering lectures on global political risk data. Our portfolio supports not only Estrian precisely, but also numerous other partners operating globally. Moving on to the next slide. MBI has been a here partner for over a decade, and in 2020, we became one of the first global here distributors. Our portfolio offers um, an extensive range of products, including global boundaries and market data for spatial analytics and expansion planning. With Konya's political risk data, we provide exclusive insights into the political resilience of countries and regions uh, to facilitate the sustainable management of supply chains. As we all aware, timely decision making is critical and being well prepared for predictive and sustainable planning is imperative. Looking at the next slide. Being a here distributor is an excellent fit for us, and we provide here location services, here data and traffic for various industries and use cases represented by our fellow partners, which you see on this slide. And if you want to learn more or get more insight into use cases and our partner portfolio, please visit our website. And before we continue, let me highlight <laughs> one important event ongoing at the moment in Munich, which is Transport Logistics. If you be around um, on Thursday, please come and visit MBI on the HERE booth. So we are located in Hall A3 at booth 353. And we would be very excited to meet you there, have a little chat, have a coffee, and um, let's talk about the latest in transport logistics. And now, don't um, wait much longer for the real uh, webinar topic. Nicole, the virtual stage is yours and everyone enjoy. Thank you very much, Karina. So Nicole, I'm giving over to you now. So please go ahead. Oh, hello, everybody. Um, first of all, verifying that you can see my screen and that you can hear me. Perfectly. Thank you, Nicole. Wonderful. And yeah, thank you so much, um, Jessica and Karina, for the introduction and the warm welcome. Thanks to MBI for the invitation and the opportunity to present uh, here Maps API for JavaScript uh, in this forum. So it's an, an honor to um, present to you today. And uh, yeah, Karina, likewise, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to work together with you on, on that front. With that um, and any further ado, let me dive into the agenda, which um, we have prepared for today. So the agenda covers topics for persons in the audience uh, which are new to uh, Maps API for JavaScript and want to learn about the features and capabilities of it and uh, how easy it is to integrate the here location services. But it's also meant for people who are using Maps API uh, for a longer time and which want to you, uh, who wants to you learn more about the new things which we are doing, um, upgrading to uh, location services on platform, um, questions around the map rendering services which we are offering, which one to use best in which scenario. And lastly, um, how to customize uh, the map appearance delivered via Maps API for JavaScript is the here style editor. So quite a, a packed agenda and therefore let me right away dive into it. Um, first of all, how is the Maps API for JavaScript position in the overall here ecosystem? First of all, it, 
<clears throat> Maps API for JavaScript belongs to the here location services and more specifically to the here location services SDK, so software development kits. And we are differentiating here between two ones. Uh, first of all, uh, the native SDK on the right hand side um, offering software development capabilities uh, to develop um, applications on a cell phone, on a tablet, on an in dash navigation system. So this is covered by the native side. And then on the other side, we have the so called web SDK, which is sended from Maps API for JavaScript, which is then running in a browser environment, not just on a um, desktop application, but also again on browser uh, systems on mobile devices like, again, the tablet. Um, so this is uh, the uh, scope of today's call. And let me continue with the three major functionalities this API has. First of all, Maps API for JavaScript API is an integrator of the here REST location services, basically building a wrapper around the location services to do mapping, to do search, to do routing. Pretty important topic um, for any kind of location aware application. Secondly, and the second big thing is visualization capabilities to generate business insights, um, not just visualizing here data, but also additional custom data on top of the map, uh, and then generate business insights out of it and make a map more attractive. And the third big thing which we are doing is about map editing, actually really modifying the underlying geometry of a map um, by modifying the geometry or the associated properties and then storing them back into a cloud system on the here um, backend side. What we are supporting as of today is um, our two major versions. Um, we are supporting an international version, including Japan, um, currently running on a version 3.1. And we are also supporting an um, asset in China, still on version 3.0. And also here, this is um, up to uh, restriction with the license, um, because China is uh, regulated pretty strictly. So it's, it's not really available. So you need to really apply for it. So this is basically the scope of uh, the JavaScript API, three main functionalities, integration of REST location services, visualization, and map editing. And let us look into these three um, different buckets um, now a little bit closer. Um, I have pictured the a possible application which you can develop with Maps API for JavaScript. First of all, starting with the map uh, on the left-hand side, this is what we are calling the a base map, a traditional base map. Um, on the same map on the right-hand side is then what we are calling internally a hybrid view, uh, a view which combines a satellite information together with the here location content on top of it. And these two services, are um, offered um, with the vector tile API, basically doing the rendering of the base map from the traditional map. And on the other side, we have the hybrid map, which is composed out of two um, rendering services. On the one hand side, it's the raster tile API providing us the information about the uh, underlying satellite image, and then again, the vector tile API providing the here content on top of it. So already two here services integrated into JavaScript API, vector tile, and raster tile API to do the, the rendering of the map. What you can also see on this um, application is this route here, which I'm currently highlighting with my screen. This is the route, which is provisioned from the routing API and then rendered on top of the map. Same for the geocoding and search service, um, which you can use to determine the start and end point of a route, but you can also make use of this geocoding API, for instance, to resolve an address to a location or a location to an address, and then add a corresponding bubble into the map. So additional two services integrating routing and search. But it stops not there. So we also have integrated uh, traffic services um, to 
provide us information about the traffic flow on the street, um, as well as the traffic incidents, meaning what is basically impacting the traffic flow. And the traffic flow is highlighted in three different colors. You can see green, you can see yellow, you can see red. Um, there is even a possibility to see uh, black if the street is entirely blocked. The uh, traffic incident icons contain additional information about the root cause of this um, incident so that you can inform yourself um, when this uh, blockage is, for instance, removed. So another service integrated is the Traffic Vector Tile API, a service which provides us um, information about public transport information is integrated with the Public Transport API, for instance, delivering us the locations of public transport stations like these U-Bahn stations here, um, but not just the location of um, public transport stops, but also providing information about timetables so that you can inform yourself if this is applicable to your use case. Lastly, the service um, on the right-hand side is about storing custom data on a here platform. This is called interactive map layer, and it basically provides a possibility to store geo content, geometry, as well as properties on a here system privately, and then also make use of it as part of the application. So in sum, we have integrated um, 10 to 12 different location services um, from mapping, from search, from routing, from traffic, from possibilities to store data and so on and so forth. So a, a big variety of different location services connected to the Maps API for JavaScript. On to the second big functionality Maps API for JavaScript offers, and this is about visualization capabilities um, so that you can derive additional insights about, for instance, your business out of it by visualizing this information in an attractive manner so that the map actually tells a story and that you can see things easier um, than just looking at the raw data in, a, in an Excel column, for instance. For that purpose, we have integrated quite some visualization capabilities like a, a heat map, like a choreoplate map, like a map combined with uh, images uh, on top of it, like the functionality to cluster information together so that it does not pollute the map too much, uh, capabilities to tilt and rotate a map to generate a 3D view, capabilities again with images, in this case animated images to show, for instance, weather conditions for customized markers, or for a bubble map. So this is um, just a list of things or as a, some selection of uh, visualization capabilities, but it by far does not end with it. So this is about the visualization capabilities. And the third big block um, we are um, enabling are the editing capabilities, as mentioned, to offer building block capabilities to really modify the data which are on top of the map. Um, this applies for all the geom primitives which you can think of like polygons, like lines, like um, points. Um, these are images from our developer portal. Um, you cannot really see the editing capabilities and therefore let me briefly switch to the uh, actual developer portal where this image was taken from. So I can, can see the polygon, you can see the individual nodes filling up this polygon, and you can touch each of these polygons, and you can drag and drop it to a newer location, you can modify the position. And this is possible not just for this polygon, which I'm just displaying, but this is possible for all the other things. And obviously, if there are attributes associated to this geometry, you can also um, manipulate it as part of an application and then, for instance, store it back into the mentioned cloud-based storage system, which is called the IML on our side. So big functionality also for the JavaScript API building 
or provisioning the building blocks to enable such a thing, an interactive thing on an, app, on an application level um, for the map editing use cases. So three main functionalities in SUM, which the API is supporting. Integration of your REST location services is one big, big thing. Visualization capabilities to make a map more attractive, generate business insights out of it, and certainly the editing capabilities. And Nicole, uh, this is Karina. Hi, we uh, want to have that a bit more interactive today and have the audience um, involved. So uh, Jessica and, and Nicole and I have prepared a question for you guys. Um, I would suggest we raise the poll and give your voice a bit of a rest, Nicole. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Karina. So the first poll question we have prepared for you, I will launch that right now. You should see it now. Um, is which JavaScript library do you use? Um, do you use the here JavaScript 3.0, 3.1, Leaflet, Map Libre, or maybe something else? Then please um, go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, and uh, while we are uh, waiting for your answers, uh, we always be happy to uh, get some more feedback uh, why you like the other JavaScript library a bit better. So even you can cross it on here. We are happy to receive your feedback through the feedback or Q&A uh, window below. So don't hesitate to give direct input. Thank you. Okay, so I think we will wait um, a couple more seconds. So if you haven't voted yet, um, please put your vote in now. And then I will go ahead and close the poll. And now you all can see the answers. So uh, it's quite evenly distributed. We have 30% um, using here JavaScript 3.1. 30% using leaflet and 40% using something else. So um, yeah, if you want, please put it in the chat. So um, I think that would also be interesting to know what um, other libraries you use. And with that, I give back to Nicole. Jessica, good. Then um, focusing now on the the second topic in the agenda, um, how to integrate location services for mapping, routing, um, and geocoding uh, with the help uh, of the JavaScript API into an application. For that, I'd like to point you to, uh, first of all, a huge collection of examples which we have on the developer portal and I will come to this page in a second where we have collected um, really a lot of different examples for the different capabilities of the JavaScript API. Let me switch over to this page. Um, the page uh, on the left hand side lists all the different examples which we are offering and they are categorized like with topics. And each of these examples are basically organized in the same way. We have an interactive map at the very top, and then we have um, the actual code building up the application on top or the map on top. We have this as part of the either JavaScript section or the HTML section. And you can basically copy and paste the content of these examples into your own application and then you can right away run see the result um, on your side. Um, now let's focus on how do we integrate a map into an application and um, for that we are going to inspect briefly how this example looks like to get you an idea that it's really not that critical to uh, get started with the whole thing. The, the first and initial step is um, obviously you need to have uh, here credentials um, provisioned uh, with an API key, which is doing the authentication towards all of our integrated location services. So this is the very first step where you are basically instantiating the here platform uh, with an application key, which is providing the authentication. 
The second important step, and you are basically already defining um, how do you, your map should look like, um, you're defining the service which you are going to use. In this case, it's the vector tile service. You're defining the start point where your map is starting off with, and you're defining the zoom level um, where you want to see the, um, or in, at which zoom level you want to see the map. So this is basically the second important step when you're connecting this with an so-called diff element on the map so that you are basically connecting this to a position in an HTML um, object. Then there are other things of importance um, or which you can choose. Um, we have integrated something which is auto automatically resize the map in case the browser gets um, changed in its size. This is this line and then we have the behavior event which is um, activating then the ability to zoom and pan on the map. And lastly, this line is um, provisioning you with the controls on top of the map. The controls of the map are basically the plus and minus, which enables you to zoom in and to zoom out. Um, it offers the possibility to select between a satellite view or the normal view or the traffic conditions. Um, and it contains a ruler or a scale bar at the end so that you can see the distance um, on the map. So with these about 10 to 50 lines of code, you have integrated your first location service utilizing the vector tile API and it renders you uh, a map at a defined location with a defined zoom level and it is interactive. You can zoom in, zoom out. So it's pretty easy to realize that. How about the search topic? So what about adding a marker to a specific position on your generated map? This is equally simple, um, like the integration of the map itself, um, picking up basically or building up on top of the example which I have showed you earlier, um, instantiating the platform, setting up the map, uh, enabling the behaviors. We have now an additional block uh, which is about geocoding. And in this case, it's about geocoding a specific address, which is an address in the US, but it can be any. Um, and then it defines actions which are executed after you have successfully um, executed this service request or in case something goes wrong, you would define what happens um, then. Thinking about a successful request, in this case to the geocoder via these um, short snippet of lines, you would <clears throat> get a marker added to the map. And this is basically done a little bit further down in the script. Assuming to the corresponding position, um, it would add a marker for each and every search result. So it could also be multiple in case the result of the address search is not just one location, but multiple. And it would add a marker on top of the map. And it would add, in addition, um, a possibility to open up an info bubble with the corresponding results. So all of that is done with the simple um, script which I've shown. Um, the result is, again, like mentioned above, we have a map integrated like we did it before. We have a geocoding request for a particular address and we have an interactivity, not just um, by zooming and panning, but also by clicking on the object which we have added to the map. So this is a second service integrated now with the here apps API for JavaScript. In this case, it's the geocoding. Coming to a third example um, about the integration of a here location service with the JavaScript API, again, following the same pattern, um, setting up the platforms, defining the map, 
making it interactive, defining the controls. We have in this case now another code snippet, in this case for calculating a route. And also in this case, you're defining the parameters which you want to see uh, considered as part of your routing response. In this case, you want to see the fastest route, you want to see a route with a car as a transportation um, mode, and you are defining the origin and destination where your route should start and where your route should end. And this origin can, for instance, be part of a geocoding result. And you're defining what you are getting back from the router um, in order to further display the results on top of the map. And again, this is then separated into these different um, handlers for a successful execution or an execution which is, uh, has, has an arrow, focusing again on the um, successful uh, route calculation. You see that there is a couple of things happening. In this case, um, we are putting the route on the map. We are adding the maneuver points to it for at the start and end point for the waypoints, and we are adding a summary to the panel. And this is done in the um, subsequent code below. And the most important thing um, from the whole snippet here is that we are um, getting in the end the route calculate uh, the route displayed on the map, which is um, example here with the dots are the maneuvers and the panel, which I've just mentioned is the list here. So in summary, um, we have examples for each of the services, which we are connecting with the Maps API for JavaScript um, prepared in a pretty easy way so that you can easily copy and paste the examples adjusted um, to your needs so that you are getting a pretty quick start into the cap into the possibilities, not just what the JavaScript API is offering, but also what the location services are offering and all this together in, in one application. Back to this slide, um, it again describes what I have just shown you on the example page. Now, focusing on the audience which um, have or are already using um, the Maps API for JavaScript today. And um, we have heard um, that it's quite a sum on, on the call. Um, and I think what is on top of mind what uh, from, from the current conversation you're having is about upgrading to the latest version of the platform services. And um, I want to give you now a little bit of an insight how this is handled um, with the JavaScript API and um, how we are organizing this together. So the important thing is everything or each of these new platform services have been integrated into Maps API. Um, 3.1. So the important thing is if you want to use the platform services, um, it's mandatory that you are running your application with 3.1. If this is the case, um, then all is uh, basically fine already because Maps API for JavaScript um, not just implements um, the so-called HLS services, but it also implements all the latest versions of the platform services, um, basically in, in one API. So it's all centralized uh, in one place with um, known interfaces. So um, it's as easy as possible realized in the JavaScript API. Um, for you to know is that the HLS services remain the default services in version 3.1. This is um, because of compatibility reasons. We don't want to break existing application. And for that reason, we are keeping the defaults on the HLS services. This means 
um, that there is an active step necessary to really upgrade to the latest versions of the services on platform before the end of the year. And how this whole thing is organized um, with the API uh, and in the developer portal documentation, this is something which um, is shown on the um, right hand side. We have for each of these services um, a reference to the existing version from HLS, which is deprecated, and we have a reference to the latest version um, on platform. This example is for routing, so the deprecated version is the version number seven, and the uh, latest version on platform is the version number eight, and each of these um, versions are referenced in the API documentation. Um, you can also visually see this um, in the tree, and maybe let me again jump to this page. In the tree on the uh, left-hand side, and what I'm currently displaying is the API reference. Um, you see all the different methods offered from the JavaScript API. Um, this entry refers to the deprecated version. This entry refers to the latest version on platform. And if you click on this one, you see that there is an additional hint that this is a deprecated version and that there's a reference that a new version should be implemented um, moving forward and by the end of the year. So this is the way how it's organized in the developer portal. Um, but we are getting, giving an additional hint to the developers working on building such an application. Um, we are um, firing a console log warning message um, whenever such a service gets used at the moment with the hint that it should be replaced. Important is that this is a message which is really only visible to developers, um, but not to the actual end user. So this is guaranteed that such a message will not appear for, for your users. And then there is another hint for switching between these location services. There's um, if the same method is necessary for calling, for instance, a routing request, there is a version number part of the um, call which you need to specify. And by that, you would point to the latest version on platform if you are specifying the version 8 in this case. So for upgrading to new services on platform, a um, couple of important things. First of all, version 3.1 is necessary. Secondly, the version 3.1 contains all the platform services. There's an active step necessary, and um, the documentation is basically covering uh, both scenarios. Thank you, Nicole. I just have a quick remark. This is Karina again. I have posted a link into the chat. So we have uh, prepared a migration website um, that guides you through the general information. So um, don't panic. Uh, most of you already have the information about upgrading the services. There is um, no need for the moment to sign up for everything else, uh, anything else. Uh, most of you have been guided through. And if you still have any questions, you still uh, can contact us through the um, usual way, via email or uh, through the chat in the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Karina. And um, maybe one additional note from myself to the upgrade of the services in general. All the examples which I have shown to you earlier are already utilizing the services on platform. So this is also a good reference to take a look how it's really realized in, in, in case you have some technical difficulties to enable these services. One specific thing about location services um, is the map rendering services. So the different map rendering services we are offering and I've added this to the webinar as an information because this is one of the of not the top one ask or question um, I'm getting. So I thought it's a good idea to also talk about this during this webinar. So we ha have 
basically two options which we are offering from the map rendering service perspective in the end generating the map which is the foundation for for all other use cases and all other services which you are building on top of it like routing like search like traffic always the map is involved and we have two options and it's actually your choice which option you are in the end choosing as the option for your application so first option is um one in red at the very top <clears throat> choosing a client-side rendering solution um, which is then provisioning you the possibility uh, to customize the styles um, and you can basically be free in, in the customization of the map um, according to your use cases according to your corporate colors all these kind of things so client-side rendered maps um, provisioned with the vector tile api as well as the raster tile API and vector tile in combination if it comes to the hybrid map. This is the option number one. And the second option is a server side rendered map with fixed tier provision styles, um, which you can use with the raster tile API. So this is on a very high level, the two options you are having between a server side rendered map and a client side rendered map. And this is not uh, let's say either one or the other is wrong it's it's a choice which you can make based on on your customer based on your use cases which best fits and let me give you some more additional um, information um, which can be relevant to take such a decision so first of all this is a color or a spreadsheet which is talking about first of all when is a raster tile api the better choice or when is a vector tile api the better choice first of all um, on the last slide we have seen that the map composition happens on different places so we have for the raster tile api composition on server side but for the vector tile api it happens on client side this has an impact on the selection because of the <clears throat> supported devices you can surf with. Um, obviously, if you are generating a map on a server side and you're delivering it, the ready rendered map onto a client, this requires less power on the client side devices, which makes the raster tile API more suitable for um older legacy devices while the vector tile api requires a little bit more of computing power on the client side to generate the map um, on this device and therefore the vector tile api is more recommended for current or modern devices um, this is one important um, criteria which you should keep in mind if you are either choosing for raster tile api or the vector tile api but this is not the only criteria which you should have in mind um, other criteria which are then coming in combination with the javascript api is interactivity tilting rotating and 3d view uh, what i mean by that is um, best explained if i'm showing you another example which is rendered with the javascript api this is a map which is rendered um, out of the vector tile api with interactivity i mean that you can for instance click on the elements of the map and you are getting all or you can make all the data which are associated with a corresponding map object you can make it visible in this case it's an urban area and it has a name this is one of the information maybe a little bit better example is now the Brandenburger tour we have a, a local name we have a name in arabic and it can be any additional information and this is possible with all the objects which we have on the map so this is a park um, this is what i mean with interactivity the other thing which i have mentioned is about tilting and rotating the map so i can rotate the map for instance um, to make the extrusion of a building visible which is the 
other element I have mentioned with the 3D view. So you can see not just the flat 2D footprint, but you can actually see the height of the building. Um, that can be relevant for quite some use cases. Also the tilting and rotation, in particular rotation can be relevant if you think about an application maybe running in a car and you want to follow the direction you're driving on a street. So these are things which are only possible um, with the vector tile API. You can also tilt and rotate a raster map, but then you will detect that the labels are upside down if you're rotating it all the way. And this is not provisioning a nice user experience. So the recommendation is clearly into the direction of a vector tile API. There are another um, level of decision criteria for zoom levels. Um, for the raster tile API, we have fixed zoom levels, meaning zoom level one, two, three, four. But uh, for the vector tile API, we have so-called fractional zoom levels, meaning we have every step in between, for instance, one and two, meaning 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. So this in general gives you a much smoother zooming experience because you can more easily scale in the vectors and this is not blurring up like uh, a raster image uh, tends to do if, if you're zooming in and zooming out. One important element which is also a decision criteria I have already mentioned on my previous slide this is about map customization. So this is not possible with the raster tile API but it is possible with the vector tile API. So what does it mean? We are obviously offering a number of here predefined styles with the raster tile API, but they are limited. So they're not endless. And there are styles which are designed from us for the general purpose, but it can very well be the case that you will require certain things in the map more prominently, or you want to highlight certain things because of your use case, or you want to tailor them towards your corporate colors. And this is then the possibilities. You can all do all of these things with the style editor together with the JavaScript API and the vector tile API. So you would go into style editor, you would change the appearance there and you would basically do all the things required for such a customization how this um, will look like i will give nicole uh, this is karina sorry for sorry for interrupting um i think we have no time to really go into the map style customization in yeah. deep i know mm -hmm. we have and we will make that available to our partners uh in the slides uh but due to time restrictions uh, we need to wrap up and give Impargo the possibility to show the JavaScript and interaction, if you don't mind. So oh, thank that's you all good. for your understanding. <laughs> sure. Good. Then I thank you all for listening. And uh, as Karina mentioned, we will share the slides with you. There's additional information in. And if there's any further questions, let Karina know and she will bring you. Thank you. Yes, we already have some questions in the uh, Q&A panel, so they will be answered shortly. Um, Nicole will have a look at them now. If we can't answer them at the moment, we will share it afterwards. And with that, I would say, Jessica, let's um, put up uh, Julian. Yes, thank you very much, Nicole, for your very interesting insights. Um, so now I'm giving over to Julian. Um, and we will see the JavaScript API in action. Okay. Let me move this down. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole, for the for the nice presentation. Um, and also uh, thank you, Karina and Jessica, for having me. Um, I'm Julian from Empargo. Uh, we we have been using the here uh, in general here services for for quite some time now and also i think now we're in our second year within the partnership with mbi so um and that's going quite well mbi helped us a lot out <laughs> with uh with migration stuff 
and uh, with with technical difficulties and so on. So that's why I'm also very happy to to share a bit our side of the of the story, what we what we do, and um, how we use uh, the the Maps API for JavaScript exactly. So um, you guys should see my screen. Um, what um, like I said, I'm from Impargo, and uh, what we are working on, or our long-term vision is to work on the next generation of trans transport management, and we're building a transport management platform. Um, if, let's see, yeah. So um, if we stay, take a quick step backwards, uh, why are we doing this? Um, so our target customer is the truck dispatcher. And the daily life of a truck dispatcher can be an operational nightmare um, because uh, truck dispatchers have a lot of different tasks they have to master. And um, they also have to use a lot of different tools. And especially smaller companies that are mainly our target customer uh, often use a lot of different tools from phone, email, Google Maps, different websites where they get information from, maybe they use some Excel sheets to manage some of their transports and so on. And um, this is the, the main goal that we try to, or the main problem we try to tackle by um, um, building or providing um, an operational tool as software as a service for, for dispatchers that allows them um, to, to do, perform all these different tasks, um, in, in one platform and our main goal there is to be very easy to use, um, uh, powerful in the sense that they can do a variety of their tasks very, very accurately and um, yeah, obviously we're cloud-based, cloud that's also why we, uh, we're very interested in or we're using the, the API, uh, the Maps API for JavaScript. And in the long term, we also want to be very integrated so that different things that we cannot solve for truck dispatchers, um, that we can integrate with solutions that, that solve these problems for them. Now, um, before I jump into the demo, I just want to give you a little bit of a background information, just a few numbers that you have a feeling for, for our company size and the maturity of the product. So uh, we started in 2017, we're, we're from, from Berlin, a startup from Berlin. Uh, we now are, have around 130, 140,000 registrations. We are a freemium platform, so not everyone who registers buys or becomes an active user. So we have 7,000, now I think 8,000 active users that are using the platform for free. Then we have 1,300 paying customers and these are all spread across 30 countries. Um, so we're, um, we basically have paying customers in all European countries. So we are yeah, a European solution. Um, and um, I think this is already it then from the presentation side. I would now jump over uh, to show you guys an example of how all of this works uh, in, in our platform. Um, so, um, what you will see now here is the tool that we provide for the truck dispatchers. Um, this is the first view that you would see if you log in. After the presentation, you're also happy to, you can just try it out yourself because it's free to start. Um, there are three tools that you see here, three apps, the planner, this is the truck route planner, and total and port calculation tool we will focus on today. Then there's orders, this is the order management part, and fleet is the communication to and tracking towards the driver. I will now only show the planner because that's where um, yeah, the most of the map um, API is used, and you can see uh, most of the features in action there. Um, the planner at the first side looks like most of the most other route planners. On the top, you have some settings. On the left side, you can enter stops. So I would enter now an example route, let's say maybe from Berlin, uh, from Berlin to, to London. This would be now an international route that's uh, where I want to maybe calculate the quotes uh, for, for a customer. 
Um, and then on the on the left side, you have a few more settings. In the bottom corner, you can see uh, basic information about this route, like the distance, the time, but also the total costs and uh, price calculation that we provide. Um, now on the map, already the route has been displayed with the two stops. And um, this already now is an example that combines a lot of different tier services uh, in, in one application. So we have the route calculation service, we have the geocoding for the, for the route inputs on the left, then uh, the route calculation um, and toll calculation in particular, and also obviously the, the, the map tiles that are displayed on the map. Now, um, I want to highlight a few things that we uh, implemented uh, using the Maps API for JavaScript um, that are like small features that help in the daily, daily operations of the dispatchers. For example, the first thing that users notice is uh, a really small thing, but when you hover over the route over a certain, uh, certain street, uh, let's hover somewhere else, you would get the street name um, as a small small label. This is important for truck dispatchers in the driver communication if they want to kind of ask, hey, are you on the A2 autobahn? Um, that's like one thing that's very helpful for them. The other thing that we've implemented is like small interactivity. So you can you can drag, drag and drop the routes and customize them a bit if you need to. Um, and also for example, you can see here are small icons where we where we highlight if there's special like accidents accidents reported or traffic jams reported by here. Um, we can also display these on the map interactive in an interactive way. And um, maybe also if you noticed um, here there's a small segment that is yellow, and then the dispatcher can click on it and see ah okay get some additional information about the segment. This is the channel tunnel. We just warn the dispatcher here that um, we don't provide uh, we don't provide toll information. This is something that the dispatcher has to has to keep in mind. So yeah, this is uh, a small example of uh, how we uh, how you can interact with the with the route itself. Um, in our application, you can also interact with the map. For example, you can just right click on it. Um, add a stop in between because maybe you you decided to pick up another load on the on the way from Berlin to London. Um, let's maybe uh, what we can also do is uh, in our application uh, users can decide uh, to to save the location as a favorite. So maybe that's a customer they often visit, customer in Paris or close to Paris, and um, then we have uh, some interactivity here on the map that the, the, the stop changes its color. And if I, I can click on it and see the details there. Um, so these are like the small, um, small tweaks or small features that we integrated uh, right inside or into the map here. Um, one other thing that Nicole mentioned are uh, briefly our layers. Uh, we also provide the, what we use is the default layers provided by here, so you can enable like traffic, or you can um, show a satellite image. Um, but we also have some custom features implemented that are very specific to our, the use cases of our customers. Uh, one small thing is you can you can uh, hide and show different favorites um, if you want to, if you don't want to see all the addresses here on the map. Uh, one maybe more special thing that we added is border crossing times. Um, this was especially relevant during peak COVID um, when uh, yeah, there were really, really long border crossing times for trucks. Now um, there are still some that are relatively long. For example, if you click here on the red icon, you can see that right now from Germany to Switzerland, there are some um, waiting times for trucks that uh, dispatchers need to take into consideration. So um, yeah, I think this was already it, what I wanted to show. Um, just a brief uh, yeah, a use case, how, how we use the, the uh, Maps API for JavaScript to integrate all these different services. Um, then let me 
quickly jump back to the presentation. Uh, I don't know how to make it full screen, but I think that's not a problem. So that's already it from my side. If you want to um, try out this use case by yourself, uh, feel free to just visit our webpage. You can sign up for free um, and try out the, the, the planner if you want to. After a while, after a while you, you will need to pay if you continue using it. But for the first trial, you can also try it out for free. Um, yeah, thank you for listening. And I think I would then hand uh, back to uh, Jessica. Thank you very much, Julian, for your insightful live demo. So now we have reached the Q&A segment, which marks the final part of our webinar. Thank you all for submitting your questions. So um, we got a couple of questions. And um, give me just one second and we will jump right in. Okay. So the first question we got was, can we animate vehicles that move and change direction on the map with web JavaScript by getting direction information from mobile? Is there a direction indicator version? So Nicole, I would hand over to you now and um, yes, we can. We hope you can answer this question for us. Um, yes, uh, so the, the general answer is yes, you can do animations and you can change um, for instance, the position of a marker by updating the location position of the marker on a, on a constant basis if you are getting a new location uh, delivered into the application. So it should show, <clears throat> now it shows that the marker is moving and if you want to indicate where it's coming from, you could also generate a polyline. So for, for the traveled distance so far, um, and whenever a new coordinate comes, you can add this to the polyline and you can uh, enlarge basically the polyline and the marker. So the, the short answer is yes, it's doable. Great, thank you. Um, moving on to the next question. Um, can we give moving animations to the marker without using CSS? Yes, this is what I've tried to explain. Um, so each marker has, has a position, uh, meaning a lat long coordinate, and you can access this marker and by updating this location, it also changes its position on the map. So this is without CSS. Okay, great. Um, and then another question that came in was, can you send a file containing the parts we need to change for the transition to 3.1.4? That is the latest version example. Um, so here, routing, here service routing service 8 instead of service routing service. I think this is a bit of a more uh, in that question um, and uh, we have a look at that. Um, otherwise, we always refer to the documentation on the developer.here.com website um, that um, there, there is all the information required, but we certainly will get back to um, that person with that question. Definitely, definitely. And I can also share code snippets, which, which are showing you. Okay. The... Yeah, we will send it out via email afterwards, which is easier. Um, yeah. That's great. Thank you, Nicole. So do we have any other question for um, Impargo? Because I found their uh, application uh, pretty interesting. And my question to you, Julian, is so when you are, have a look at the style editor and are you going to reprint your map into yellow and black? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, we, already, <laughs> we already did that. Um, but then in the team, there was this um, turned into a very big discussion which map looks better. So we didn't, uh, we just haven't reached the conclusion yet how the map exactly should look like. Um, yeah, it's not a technical problem. I think it's more that um, multiple people in our team have different opinions on how, what a beautiful map is. So, um, yeah, that's what the, the state of right now is there. <laughs> Yeah, 
you guys will certainly see some information when we have sent out the the presentation because uh, Nicole put a bit of an effort, but due to time constraints, uh, we weren't able to uh, really have a dig into that. So if you think it's worth having a session on the map style editor from here technology, you let us know and we are happy to set up a second session with uh, Nicole. And probably when his voice is better because he's suffering a bad a cold as well today. <laughs> so thank you for um, taking on the presentation despite the sickness. And um, so from my side, um, I don't have any further questions and I just can uh, call you up sending us the questions in. We will have a look at it. We will answer them via email and we would highly appreciate your feedback, what you want to see in the next webinar. If you want to have a more tech deep dive, if you want to have more visual, if you want to have more partner demo, I'm, I'm sure Impargo is not happy to display the snippets of code <laughs> to everyone, but I think we still can do deep dives in um, topics you want to see. So we appreciate your feedback and uh, the closing. Jessica, I leave up to you. And thanks again, everyone, to our partners and participants today for their for their time. Yeah, thank you, Karina. So uh, as you already mentioned, we are approaching the end of today's webinar and I would remind would like to remind uh, the audience that we will be sharing the slides and the recording of the session in a follow up email that you should receive tomorrow. And yeah, we hope you found the insights on the here maps API for JavaScript interesting as well as informative. And of course, a big thank you to our presenters Karina, Nicole and Julian and to all of you for attending today. So to help us improve further webinars, we kindly ask you for your feedback in the survey that will be available after the session ends. And um, you can also please put um, interesting topics um, for future webinars in there. So um, yeah, we can do that for you. And if you don't have time now, the feedback link will also be included in the follow-up email. So thank you all in advance and we wish you a great rest of the day. Goodbye. Thank you also from my side.